Okay, welcome everyone to the uh, Inca seminar uh, this week, 5th of March. And uh, it's my great pleasure today to introduce two speakers from uh, Fujitsu in Munich, who are uh, Stefan Walter and Christian Minch. And they're going to tell us something about, um, I guess, using the uh, digital annealer for solving SAP problems. So over to you guys. Yeah. Hey, hello from us. Thank you, um, Paul, for having us. Um, let's start um, with the talk. All right, so the title is Perform uh, Performance Enhancement for Solving Three Set Problems by Digital Anita. Um, so the work was done um, in collaboration with uh, Sebastian Zielinski from the uh, University in Munich. So he is part of the chair of uh, Professor Lindenhoff Popin. Um, they are concerned with yeah, optimization in general, um, but lately also using quantum computers, quantum annealers. And they also have access uh, to our digital annealer services, um, which fits perfectly in solving combinatorial optimization problems. Uh, um, so our team, that is Fritz Schinkel, uh, Christian Münch, and, and others, which did not participate in this project here. Um, we are part of Fujitsu Germany, and uh, we are mainly dealing with, let's say, real world customer problems, pain points, um, when it comes about yeah, solving large and complex combinatorial optimization problems using an innovative technology, uh, our digital annealer. Um, and we were thinking how we could, um, or what possible project we could do together with uh, the guys from the university, Sebastian. And um, since he is very interested in studying, solving three such instances, with all possible solvers that are out there, um, we thought that that might be a good starting point. Huh? And um, basically, we are giving a very dense overview of what we did in this 30 minutes. And if you would like to have some more details, um, we refer you to our recent preprint here. Okay, so the motivation why studying 3 um was mainly these two papers by Sebastian, um, where he in, in one looked at different 3 set to uh, cubo transformations um, to use quantum annealing devices, here especially the D-Wave machine, um, to reformulate a, a three-set problem to a quadratic unconstrained binary optimization problems and then solve it on the on the quantum annealer. And a, a, a more detailed paper where he is introducing um, yeah, uh, one of these transformations in detail. So we were thinking, okay, Sebastian can do this using a quantum annealer. Um, he has also access to our digital annealer. Let's see how, how this works. How does uh, solving three set instances uh, on, on a digital annealer look like? Um, how we were just interested, how do these transformations work? Are there maybe other transformations uh, that one can use? Um, and uh, what could be some measures to indicate uh, the, the so let's say, the hardness of, of solving the cubo uh, than uh, using, using such a machine as a digital annealer? Okay, so this uh, will be the agenda first, because um, maybe, I don't know if every one of you is familiar with the digital annealer, we'll have a yeah, more high level overview. What is digital annealer? How does it work to get a feeling for it? Um, um, one slide on 3 set cubos and, and their transformations. And then Christian will take over for the experiments and the results and, and, and conclude then with, with our findings. Um, what we are doing in our paper. Okay, so first of all, digital annealer, we call it also, it's, it's a quantum inspired technology, quantum inspired computing. And what is it? It is basically a special purpose hardware specifically designed for solving large and complex combinatorial optimization problems. It is an ASICS chip. 
uh, capable of handling uh, these yeah, combinatorial optimization problems up to 8192-bit. What is especially um, nice here that is you, you have an all-to-all -all connectivity. So each bit can couple to any other bit. And these weights that couple um, bits, they, they, they can have uh, quite a high precision up to 64 bit. Uh -huh. And um, in the next two slides, I will show you why it does make sense to have a dedicated chip for solving combinatorial optimization and how um, having it as a hardware uh, can speed up things. Because you will see that it is basically just a hardware implementation of a Markov chain Monte Carlo, basically simulated annealing uh, algorithm. So, so what we have here is a chip. This is called Digital Anita version 2. Uh, meanwhile, there is also, also a version 3 of it. It is, let's say, the, the hardware. Um, and on top, there's a software layer, which, is a lot, which allows us to solve larger instances. So we can have now up to uh, 100,000 bits. We can also have inequalities. Um, we can handle... Um, special constraints such as one hot constraints very um, efficiently uh, in this uh, version three. But for studying these three sub problems, we stuck to version two um, because um, we also focus, let's say, a little bit more on, on smaller instances. And maybe a comparison because um, this might be more familiar to the audience here, makes sense. So a comparison to quantum annealing devices here, the D-Wave machine, um, if you would compare uh, D-Wave, these normal D-Wave machines can handle 5,000 plus qubits. They have a specific uh, topology on which the qubits are laid out. Each qubit has a, a certain number of couplers uh, per, per qubit. And what you need to do is, it's called uh, minor embedding. In, if you have a, a, a cubo you want uh, to solve using a, a kneeling device, you have to put it on this device and then make sure that it fits the topology of the qubits in this device. Uh, and then speed up in yeah for for you know, a general um, problems problem that you want to solve is is yeah in practice unclear. You always have to put it uh, to test, um, as we also have to do for our digital annealer. Here it might be more visible what, what speed up actually is and or where the speed up comes from. And, and this is um, might be clear if we look at what is simulated annealing and what is then done on the hardware implementation of simulated annealing on, on let's say, the, this Essex chip. Okay. I guess uh, all of you know or are familiar with simulated annealing. You start with an initial uh, configuration of your state initial temperature and you do some iterations uh, and during these iterations you decrease the temperature and um, for each iterations iteration um, you, you basically um, generate a new candidate state uh, calculate the difference in energy from yeah, from the previous to the new state if you go down the hill so uh, the delta energy is slower is smaller than zero you accept this step Otherwise, you, you do a, uh, an, a Markov experiment, um, which we call it Hastings criterion, um, and then you can also accept yeah, steps where you go up in energy again, but which allows you to explore this energy landscape solution space um, a little better. Okay, so here's, let's say, the pseudocode for the digital and leading device. So what it does, it does 128 independent optimization runs in parallel. Furthermore, it has a parallel trial scheme. That means um, on each iterations, iteration, um, going from the current state to the next state, we do all possible up to 8192 bit, one bit flips in parallel. 
so, so it's basically a massive parallelization of um, within this um, uh, iteration loop. Huh? Um, th there's a, a scheme how to select then one candidate um, or one state out of these candidates, um, and then you can go on. Furthermore, and this is also where this quantum inspired comes uh, into play, um, it might be that during this um, course of optimization, you get stuck in a local minimum for some time. Uh, so in quantum annealing devices, you no, know, it's it's possible to you know, have this tunneling from from a minima to, to a better minimum, potentially the global minimum. Um, th this is not possible here. However, we can say if or it's implemented like this that if you're stuck for some time into local in, in a local minima, let, let's just add some energy and and uh, make it easier to go over. Excuse me to go over um, this, this bump here and um, to, let's say, yeah, increase the search space a little bit, to go through the search space a little bit better. Uh, so this is what is called a, an offset, dynamical offset energy. Uh, and since it's, 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 it's on chip, this algorithm works, works very, very fast. It's, it's very, very fast. Uh, and to give you a rough estimate, in order to have let's say, half a billion iteration of this um, uh, optimization algorithm, it just takes roughly a second. Huh? All right, so this is uh, giving you a brief idea of what digital annealer is about. And, and maybe just as a, as a reminder for you, so we all have a scientific background, also the guys at Fujitsu. Um, but right now we are really focused working together with customers and using this technology to solve real world yeah, combinatorial optimization problems. And, and here's just uh, a brief overview of some projects we did together with, uh, with customers. And you see that we, we do projects um, yeah, ranging from var var various industries, let's say optimization of, of transport for, for the Deutsche Bahn, um, like like scheduling uh, problems, um, drug discovery, um, financial optimization, etc. Et All right, but now let's let's get back to to the uh, actual topic of the talk: three set instances, cubos, and yeah, solving three set uh, using uh, annealing devices, digital annealing devices. Okay. So we are dealing with binary variables, x x naught to x n minus one, zero and one. A, a general three set formula um, looks like this. So you have clauses of three um, literals here, and they are connected with or, and um, clauses are connected with an end. What you would like to find in the end is a configuration binary variables which uh, satisfies your given formula okay so so what is a cubo a cubo is a quadratic unconstrained binary optimization um, you know might also know it as an, as an icing model because if you um, substitute this uh, do a mapping from binary variables to spin variables, so minus one to one classical spin variables, um, you, you get the Ising model. Um, and the task here is to find configuration X, which minimizes uh, this energy function. Uh, so uh, the three set instance or the three set uh, formula and the cubo, they uh, do not very, do not look, uh, very similar right now, therefore you have to do some transformations. There are various transformations already out there. Uh, first, there's a transformation which we refer to as Chancellor transformation. And I guess Paul knows this uh, in, in depth. So it's uh, basically formulating the three set instances as an icing spin glass model. Um, there you also, there you encounter cubic terms 
which is not that good if you use a, a quantum annealing device or also a digital annealing device because they need their energy function in criteritic form as, as shown here um, above. Huh? So you have to reduce these cubic terms to quadratic terms and you can do this using auxiliary variables and then basically yeah, for the expert the cubic term is a parity check on, on, on the on the spin variables. Um, so in, if you want to have details there, there's also reference to that. And as mentioned before, was inspired by Sebastian's work. Um, he uh, has done something which is called automated pattern cubo and uh, he uses clause types and by that algorithmically constructs some cubos and then in the end combines them to the given three set instance. Uh, so we, we introduced uh, also in this uh, paper, we wrote another transformation, which is called, yeah, which we call count true. Um, we can write down let's say, an energy function for it. Um, and the idea is to penalize yeah, for each clause variable configurations which do not satisfy this clause. So you have a sum of all clauses and then this product with the axis. And the axis, okay, if, if you, you you can already see here that it is also of, of cubic form. And um, we also have to, to break it down to a uh, quadratic form. But there are also known um, techniques to do that. Huh? Okay. This was just setting the stage. So we are looking at three set problems, formulate them as cubos using these three transformations. I should say that for Chancellor transformation, there's uh, still an, um, a, a parameter uh, that you can choose. Uh, just we call it J. Um, and depending on the parameter, we also look at two um, of such transformations. And then I guess uh, Christian, you will take over and present yeah. uh, the experiments we did and our results. I think you have to stop sharing so I can start sharing. Okay. Um, yeah. Can you see? Yeah. Already? Yes. Perfect. All right, so for experiments, we used the same data set from the paper uh, on the benchmark of different uh, 3 to cubo transformations. Uh, there were 1,000 different instances, each with uh, 46 clauses and, N, uh, and uh, 11 variables. We tried, uh, we compared four different uh, transformations, one which was derived with a pattern cubo approach. We call that algorithm cubo. And two Chancellor transformations were one with J equals one and one with J equals five, as uh, Stefan mentioned. And our uh, new transformation count true. Um, we solved each of these instances um, 100 times with the digital annealer in order to um, get an idea of the stability of the uh, the, uh, the tests. And we did that for different numbers of iterations also um, to see the convergence uh, with respect to correct solutions and solved three that instances. And um, yeah, you can see that um, the solved three that instances uh, are always a bit above the num uh, percentage of correct solutions. Correct solution means um, among the 100 times uh, each uh, each test is, is counted and, and solved three that instances only counts um, which of the 1,000 um, three that instances could be solved at all. First of all, we compared our results for the Chancellor transformations to the results in the in the benchmark paper, um, which were derived by the quantum annealer. And one can see already for 10 to the four iterations uh, with a digital annealer, which is not very much, that already there um, the results are better than with the quantum annealer. And then one can 
uh, see that for 10 to the 8 iterations um, for the Chancellor transformation with j equals 5, we we even get 100% correct solutions. So um, each for each of the 1,000 instances and 100 tests, we found the correct, correct solution. Um, but we were actually then interested in um, what we see in the in the plots on the right here. Uh, so we were interested in why the different transformations behave um, like this. You can see that the algorithm cube and the Chancellor J1 transformation are very strong for small iterations num iteration numbers, but for higher iteration numbers with the digital annealer, the uh, Chancellor J5 and count true transformation overtake the other two tra transformations. Uh, we wanted to understand that a bit better. Um, first of all, we looked into the same metrics as in the paper um, that was already, already is existing. And we found that um, we find two groups of transformations. Um, if we look at the number of different quadratic values in the, um, in the cubo, and also the same grouping appears when one looks at the distribution of the quadratic values. So we have the two groups, algorithm cubo and Chancellor J1 transformation and uh, Chancellor J5 and count true transformation. And the fact that the count true transformation behaves a bit, as, is a bit stronger than the Chancellor J5 transformation uh, comes from the fact that um, this count true transformation needs uh, much less bits. And so the search space is uh, much smaller. But this cannot yet explain why um, the first group of algorithm cube and Chancellor J1 starts very strong for small iteration numbers, but then in the end is overtaken by the other two transformations. And so we had to look at other metrics to explain that. And to do that, we uh, took small 3 z instances. Uh, but similar to the bigger ones, um, those small ones had only 20 clauses and five variables, and they were small enough to be solved exactly. So we looked at the whole energy landscape, um, so at all the energies and uh, corresponding uh, configurations by uh, looking at the corresponding Hamiltonian, which is diagonal and has, has all the energy values on the diagonal. And so um, for the quantum annealer, uh, then the lowest gap, so the uh, distance between the smallest and second smallest eigenvalue of the Hamiltonian um, is interesting because it, um, it tells how long the annealing process has to be done. But for the digital annealer, we uh, think that this is not so much of interest uh, so it, it, it cannot uh, explain the, uh, the convergence or convergence problems um, of a transformation. And so we rather analyze the eigenvalue uh, degeneracy of each transformation. And one can um, again find the two groupings of algorithm cube and Chancellor J1 and the other two transformations. Um, the first two transformations have um, many um, yeah, eigenvectors for the smallest eigenvalue and also for the second smallest eigenvalue. And this explains why already for small numbers of iterations, uh, those two transformations um, perform quite strong be because one can be very lucky and hit a, the best solution with already few iterations. But then with higher iteration numbers, there are many, since there are many suboptimal uh, solutions, um, the convergence of the digital annealer has a problem here because it gets caught in, in those suboptimal solutions and jumps back and forth between them. While uh, for the other two transformations, there are much less uh, suboptimal um, solutions and the convergence is better. 
Um, not only the number of eigenvectors for the eigenvalues is interesting, but also uh, the Hamming distance between the corresponding uh, configurations. And so we also looked at that. And we, so we looked at the frequency uh, between uh, of Hamming distance between um, two yeah, configurations um, for the second smallest eigenvalue that uh, then gives insight into uh, how much the convergence of the digital annealer uh, is, is hindered. And so one can see for the first group um, with, with a slower convergence that there are man many, uh, th that the frequencies are first of all much higher than for the other two transformations, but also that there are um, very small hemming distances involved. And so jumping around between those uh, configurations is far more likely than, than for these other two transformations. And comparing only Chancellor J5 and count true transformation, one can see that uh, for the um, count true transformation, the average frequency for the uh, small Hamming distances is higher than for the Chancellor J, uh, J5 transformation. And one can already refine that, uh, also refine that in, in the plot here. So if you look at, um, at this 80% um, horizontal line, uh, then the distance between the count true transformation and the Chancellor J5 transformation is much bigger than at the point when uh, both of them reach the 100% uh, correct solutions. Uh, and um, so one can see that the count true transformation um, converges slower than the Chancellor J5 transformation for the high iteration numbers. But of course, it, uh, it 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 starts much higher because of uh, the fewer bit number, so so the the smaller search space. Yeah, that that was what we did, and now let's conclude. So we uh, yeah compared different three ZAT to Cubo transformations, and um, looked into uh, how and why this impacts the solution quality. Um, we also introduced a new transformation, which uh, we called count true. And uh, yeah, we found that digital annealer performs better than the quantum annealer, which might also come from the fact that uh, the um, accuracy of the, the weights in the cubo can be much uh, much higher for the digital annealer and that and and, and also because it's it has this uh, all to all connect connectivity uh, we also tried uh, did some tests already with larger 3z instances and found that um, the digital annealer frequently finds correct solutions also there and if it does, then it's uh, much faster than the three ZAT solver uh, that we used uh, to to generate uh, the instances. Uh, Sebastian Zielinski is also researching on degeneracy and engineering, and we also had the chance to try uh, the new extended Ising machine, which is uh, still in research, and this uh, can solve also higher order polynomial problems. And so we do not have to uh, break down the, the cubic uh, polynomials to quadratic form. And we tried that on the large instances, uh, only a, a few of them, but we found that uh, they could be solved very quickly uh, in, in up to 10 seconds. And so this is, we are all, um, very interested to, to look into that direction as well. And yeah, if you're interested, uh, we also have a tutorial um, where you can build your own uh, cubos with our uh, digital annealer SDK um, and solve them with an emulation of the digital annealer for small problems. Uh, yeah, the, the QR code is on the right side here.
And yeah, then we are open for questions. Great, thank you very much, uh, Christian. And uh, before that, Stefan, round of applause uh, from me on behalf of the audience. Um, and uh, as uh, Christian mentioned, uh, we have time for questions. So I guess most of my questions, if I may, are around the hardware, which I guess Stefan was uh, talking about. So could, could you maybe return to the pseudocode? Well, yeah. the email that was quite interesting. Uh, well, just this one here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I, I guess my question is really around that last line of the pseudo code where you have this energy offset. So, you, so you've, 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 there's, there's no randomness in this as far as I can see. You've replaced the random uh, metropolis type. Um, acceptance with this extra energy offset or have i misunderstood so and there's still randomness inside so it's still um heuristics no. it's it's not an exact solve but yeah no. so, so where am i seeing the randomness in your pseudo code is it buried in the word maybe it is <laughs> maybe if you can um go to, to click two times question i think so we said we all we do all these uh, bit flips, one bit flips in parallel. So we get a candidate list out of possible bit flips, and we select one of those uh, at random. In the code, it's if at least one bit flip accepted, then choose one state at random. Uh, yeah. and also, before that. I understood if you have a bunch of lower energy solutions and you pick one of them at random, is that correct? If we have candidates, uh, then we pick one of them at random. And if we have no candidate, then we increase yeah. the energy until we again find an, a candidate. And right. then we set the energy, uh, the, the, this, this artificial energy again to zero. And work with the old uh, with the original energy again. Make sure I completely understood here. A candidate means any state that's got a lower energy than the previous state. Yeah, uh, or the or the this uh, metropolis criterion. Okay. Yeah. So we, we we propose and evaluate bit flip. If accepted, then record. This if accepted includes the metropolis criterion. Okay. Now if accepted could be. Uh, lower in energy from the beginning, or it passes a metropolis criterion. Yeah, right. This right. is very okay. This is uh, very densely written here. <laughs> yeah, understood. Understood. Yeah, sure. So, and, and I guess my other question about the hardware was around this version three system that you have that has the hardware and the software layer, which sounds very interesting. So, so is the hardware exactly the same as the version two? It's eight thousand one hundred ninety-two bits fully connected. Yes. And then the question of somehow uh, embedding your problem efficiently onto that um, uh, limited scale. Yeah. Okay. So understood. Basically, there's it's a taboo search on top of it, uh, breaking down problems to chunks yeah. of eight thousand bits, and then you you have to relink them again. And if I may have similar, if you again compare to what you might know to the D wave to the uh, hybrid solver. Okay. Yeah. Understood. It also, the hard, yeah, supposedly the hardware plus the software layer on top. Yeah. Maybe my final question about the hardware is you, you, you didn't say much about um, time to solution, for example, which is a metric that people like me like. Yeah, you know, how how have you done the scaling of the time to solution and how that compares with other annealing type uh, physically inspired and or uh, quantum annealing uh, solvers? Yes, so for it is. I mean, it, it always depends on what you count time to solution end to end or so. <laughs> um, so I said you can do roughly half a billion iterations in one second. Was that the, half ten to the, the nine? Half a billion. Half a billion. Okay. Billion. Yeah. Um, 
So, no and so for, for, for this for this uh, for the experiments we did um where Christian showed the table where we have 10 to the four iterations and 10 to the eight, the the um annealed time on the chip for 10 to the four iterations is, is roughly 60 16 milliseconds and um for 10 to the 8, it is um, roughly 12 seconds. Huh? OK. But, that, but, that me, but because we also get 100 solutions out of the chip, that, that means we, 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 we run it. We need to do uh, a couple of optimizations. So ha have, have you published any metrics doing this comparison? Yeah, come, up, come up with some fair metric and benchmark the time to solution scaling as a function of problem size against other solvers. Is, is that in the literature or, or not? So we specific, in, in, in our study, we did not do this. We just had these rough estimates or we did the timing for solving the, the uh, instances uh, we were comparing to. So there we have numbers. But let's say um, for the hardware, there are references or studies uh, which do an analysis of that time to solution scaling with increasing problem size. Um, we are preparing something again with the University of Hamburg on solving max cut instances. Um, and we compare to a, a benchmark library called Q, Q. What is it called, Christian? <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. The MPLib. Uh, it's a huge max cut uh, benchmark uh, instance library. And there we do also a proper time to solution analysis. OK, so good. Well, I'm, I'm, for I'm here, good. it was the focus on the, the three set of Kubo uh, transformations, understanding them, see how they perform. I, I did have one more question about the hardware that I've just remembered. Sorry, maybe you said this and I missed it, but uh, you, you can do the equivalent of local fields on your bits. So you can have terms in your in your connectivity graph along the diagonal, yeah, as well as the couplings that we see here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Good, good. I, I, I think I've... I've uh, dominated the question, so perhaps I'll give <laughs> to ask questions if they have any. If not, let's uh, thank uh, Stefan and Christian again for a very nice talk. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, thank you. I, I look thank forward you. to seeing everyone at the um, next uh, Inca presentation in a week's time. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah. All right. Bye.